guess uh, I'll direct this question to uh, Rasmus and also kind of Matt, Raphael, and, and Ian. Uh, do you think you learned anything uh, about concept artists or concept art uh, from the perspective of being a lead artist or art director? So once you kind of got to that level, oh did, was there a perspective <laughs> shift? Um, that's, a, that's a difficult question. Um, it doesn't, I mean, for me personally, it didn't teach me anything about the work I was doing or process or approach. It taught me how to deal with people, mm -hmm. which is a massive thing when you're dealing with teams and you're, you're working within our departments. I think we, we were talking about this mm -hmm. earlier on. It's, um, you can, you know, you can hone your process and you can, you know, get better with your technique and all that kind of stuff. But unless you can get on with people, then you're not really going to get that far, you know. So that, I think that's the, the biggest thing that I, I learned from being a lead artist or a any any tips art, and tricks for uh, mm. getting listen along to with people. people. <laughs> Sorry, I just talked over you, so I didn't listen to you there. Yeah. <laughs> well, you actually you, listen, you were listening yeah. so well yes, that you knew that what I was going to say. I just say. knew what you were going to yeah. say because read minds uh -huh. as well. That's that's a really big thing. Um, I don't know. Yeah, just just be. Um, I, I I always bear in mind there's a there was a thing that uh, do you guys know Neil Neil Gaiman the writer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He did a commencement speech, which you probably all have seen. You know that famous mm -hmm. one where he talks about be three things? He said, be nice to work with, be prompt, and be good. <laughs> and if you can be two of those things, that's, that's pretty cool. But try and be all of them, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, and sometimes we have bad days and things like that, but I think it's like, you know, what, what I've kind of learned by being in those kind of positions, any management position is, people are going to be having bad days. You, you never know why somebody's coming to work and they're not doing it. It's not firing for them. So don't be too hard on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just hope that people are going to be like that back to you. It's, I'm, I'm not Christian, but it's a very Christian thing to treat other people as you would have them treat yourself. Mm -hmm. That doesn't explain anything about technique and process and things like that, but I think it's as important to be a good person to work with. Mm -hmm. is and is there work. anything, I guess, like uh, either Matt or uh, Rasmus or, or Raphael that you guys learned aside from uh, people skills? It's kind of, everything is connected to people skills at that level. As Ian says, if you, if you don't have the capacity to understand and respect and also forgive, it sounds a little mm -hmm. harsh, but like, like you say, we're all having a bad day. It's about communication first and foremost, and it's about being able to put into words what you want to achieve and then making sure that those goals are both ambitious and simple at the same time because if you feel we've all known being at the receiving end of, of, of direction if it's too complicated and there's too many goals in one batch of direction you're like you're just locked in so it's about um, yeah being able to communicate what you want to achieve in a way that is so simple that there are many pathways to that goal mm -hmm. Because then you give the control to the artist, so it, it's all about people skills and, and, mm -hmm. and communication. And also being able to say, I don't have the answer. Yeah. You are finding the answer, and that's what you do, and we're exploring this question. So mm -hmm. let's try and get a little bit closer to finding what we're looking for. Yeah, it really strips you of perfectionism in a lot of good ways, where, and, and, it, and it demystifies art in a lot of ways too, where you realize if it were just you, you would kill yourself trying to get it just right, whereas you're gonna get something out of every different artist. They're gonna give you a different, it's, it's something else. And so it gets you thinking more and more about like what is the idea, and is the idea intact? And, if, and if, as long as the, the, you know, the, the idea will be represented differently by different artists, and it just allows you to let go a little bit, um, and you really have to do work on those language skills of, you know, if you can get that across. And, and, and then you just have to let go of, you know, and, and when you do really let go, you get surprised by like, I would never have thought of that. But you've just totally opened up, you know, new territory that we've never been before. So, you know, just to switch gears for a second, we have a lot of students here. We have our, our diploma students and other students as well. And some of you have some extensive experience teaching. So, of course, Samantha with uh, Studio Technique and Raphael at Centre Nad and various workshops around the world. Uh, and also Carla, who does lots of workshops around the world and also with Schoolism, right? And so I was wondering, do you guys notice kind of... Um, any maybe dead ends or blind alleys that you sometimes see students kind of start to go down and you wish that you could correct them so that they wouldn't waste that time off the right path? I think um, the number one thing 
Is this thing on? <laughs> there we go. I think the number one thing that I always do and, and talk with students about is more controlling their emotions and controlling their anxiety. I think if I were, every time I see someone like, you know, come up or, or showcase like, you know, a portfolio or something like that, there's two kinds. Um, there's the one that will talk forever because they're so nervous, but they'll tell you all the reasons why they don't like their work, why this isn't happening. And then there's the other artist that just like, you know, hates on themselves as well, but stays quiet. Mm -hmm. But when you ask them, why did you make this decision? Oh, I don't know. I just, I was so angry or sad or nervous. Um, I think one of the major revelations of teaching so many people has just been, you know, like, calm down. Like, art painting is just something, you know, it's not, it's not, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say too much because part of it is gonna talk tomorrow, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it'll be like a yeah. spoiler. But yeah, no, I, I feel like it, it's important to kind of reach a balance, a mental, emotional balance. I think that's the best point to where it's a student has the ability to actually be able to learn and mm. allow themselves to learn. You can't yeah. learn from a position of, I suck, I'm <laughs> angry, I'm depressed, or that guy's better, well. or panic, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, could I just, there's, there's a point, if I jump in there. We, we were doing that, that thing in Paris last year, and um, we were out at, at night having dinner, and this girl came up who must have, I think she said she was 19, and she came up, and um, I was talking to, it was when Craig Mullins was there. And I was like, oh my God, I'm talking to Craig Mullins. My God, pinch me. But this girl came up and uh, she said, could I, could I just have a chat with you? And um, she said, I've just left school and I'm like 19 and it's not happening for me yet. And she broke down in tears. Oof. And we were like, I was 45 before I felt anything start happening for me. So don't worry about it. You know? But it's yeah, that, it's that yeah. panic. It's thinking I should be really successful as soon as I leave school and stuff. This Sorry, is, but you know, this it's, is not, it's a similar thing. This is not good, because this is no. tomorrow's talk. This is <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> but yeah, no, no, sorry, no like, but, it's, but it's all of us, yeah. right? Well, so. let's, let's talk about our favorite colors or something, shall no, we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, black. Mine's puce. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> cool, very cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll move on. So um, <laughs> this is kind of maybe a, a difficult question to answer, but... Uh, anyone can can take a crack at it. What do you think makes your art different? <laughs> <laughs> it's more boring than the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. It's really low key and kind of boring. Yeah, mine is different because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, I no. That's oh no, no, that's mine. I got to pick that one. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I got it. No. Um, um, I just focus on the focal point and then half-ass everything else. <laughs> nice. <laughs> focus on the focal point? Yeah. Why there? That's life tips there, really. Yeah. <laughs> everything in general. It, it, that, that, that question leads to two self-absorbed answers. We're artists, we, we're like, oh, no, not me. Oh. I'm no good. Oh. You can't. I okay, mean, you're right. So why don't I we... Think, sorry, uh, I, I, uh -huh. I jump, I'm, I'm jumping in all over the place here. Good. Um, I think... <laughs> Partly what, what that is, is like what, where we all want to be as artists is finding, and again, we've, we've all been talking to each other this afternoon, it's like, so we've probably talked about this a lot, but what you want to be, where you want to be is you want to find your own voice, and your own voice comes from, nobody else has got the experience that you've got, from being born to where you went to school, where you grew up, what your yeah. parents did, all of that, yeah. who your friends are, what your favorite TV shows were, all of those kind of things, is only you who's had that experience. Mm -hmm. So try and, try and use that as, as much as possible. Yeah. I mean, my, if, if, we, if you're talking about you know, why your particular art is so, like, what it is. So you grew up around ships floating yeah. in the... Yeah. I yeah. grew up in the shittiest um, mm -hmm. industrial town, which is now post-industrial. But then we had shipyards and we had coal mines, we had all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to school and seeing this stuff, seeing ships being built down the bottom of my street. And it was only when I kind of began thinking, right, I've done this Grand Theft Auto thing for 20 years now, mm -hmm. I want to do something that's mine. And when you start digging in there and this stuff that comes out, don't stop it from coming out either. Mm -hmm. Let it, let it mm -hmm. come. Yeah. Let it, because mm -hmm. that's, that's the true stuff that you should be doing. Look at other people's work. 
but try not to ape it too much. I mean, I do, we all do. You know, I, my, I've been ripping off Ralph McQuarrie and Mobius and all these people for years, you know? Be honest about it. But find your own voice in there as well. But um, and that's I want to also add on, uh, so many students also ask that, because that's the number one, one of the number one questions I get asked is like, how do you get your style? How do I find my style? You, you don't. You I, land I, on your style. Yeah, like yeah. And you're, being unaware yeah. of it until all of a sudden other people are aware of it. Exactly. It's your almost like you don't get to call your stuff iconic. Other people yeah. do. It's kind of the same. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think like your influences, is like has been said, your influences, your experience and all that, that will shape your style. Yeah. It's your yeah. preferences. It's all of that. This might not be a great metaphor, but like style is effectively smoke. Like, how do I get smoke? Well, you got to build a fire. Mm -hmm. and, oh. and then the fire is like just busting your ass. Just work. Just work. Yeah, and the, the smoke just comes off of it. Like, yeah. Good job. Yeah, it, 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 it's a side <laughs> effect of the work. It's a, yeah, it's a byproduct. Yeah. It's not something that you, if you steer towards. That's, yeah. It's not going to help you. And I think, yes, you, you said it very well, uh, Jan. Yun. 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 Get it right, son. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But it's, it's not like, uh, okay, I want to have like a, a lot of uh, clicks on my image, so I'm following the trend because now the trend is to do uh, this kind of uh, spaceship and stuff. It's more like what hey, I hey, really hey, want. Please. What you really, Shots you feel fired. you have to express, what you really want, what you have, maybe you picture something in your head, you have an image, a world in your head, and you want to, 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 to represent, to recreate that. Mm -hmm. You need to... You really need to, to create what you have in your mind. It's not like, okay, I need to follow that trend or I want to be famous because they had like that many views. So maybe if I do this kind of, this style of image and this style of uh, you know, execution, I will get the same amount of, of uh, followers. So it's really about like, what you need to express. And I think this is the style you have is like, exactly what you said. Like, what moves you and what you express through you, your art. Yeah, and I guess it has an authenticity since it's from where you grew up. And even though it's fantastical, kind of all the elements are, feel like they fit together yeah. in a and, cohesive world. And this world. is kind of what my thing is about, so I'm going to let's, let's okay. move on. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so my next question is, um, and I got some of these questions from our uh, staff, Loic, and uh, who you all know, and Katie, who's uh, there on the sound. So thank you, guys. And I'm going to have uh, some audience-submitted questions in a bit. Now, this question, uh, how do you feel about the gender balance in the concept art industry? And do you think things have changed a lot since you've started, Matt? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Samantha and, uh, and Carla. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, go? Oh, uh, I, I, well, see, the thing is for me is that I've transitioned a bit more into doing concept art because I had a background as a 2D feature animator first. And so all my drawing obviously drew me more into going in this way than mm -hmm. becoming a CG animator. Um, so, but I know in my lifetime, at least as an animator, I was always the only, in the hand-drawn days, I was always the only, I was always the only girl. But I don't, I think, I don't know, it's not like girls weren't allowed to be animators, it's just nobody was, and I was always alone in that way. And, and I find now I'm surrounded by a lot more women, and I don't know if that's just because it's concept art and not animation, although with CG now there's a lot more women in CG animation than there were in hand-drawn feature animation. Don't know, again, I really don't know why, but I feel like it's, and now when I go into schools, I see more, mm -hmm. I see a, like almost a 50-50 class of, student, of men and women. Um, but I don't, that's the thing, because you know you were saying about teaching and stuff, and a lot of the, the work that I do is, um, I do teach at schools sometimes, but most of the time I'm doing master classes at studios around the world. So when I go into the studio spaces, I still don't see a 50-50. But I, I don't feel like it's any kind of discrimination or anything. It's mm -hmm. just that people just... I just don't... People selected into different jobs. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it's like I don't get the impression that there was a reason for it. It just doesn't mm. seem But is it, it's getting better it's in the sense... What do you think, Carla? Has it yeah. changed? Yeah. It's, it's tricky, right? Because it's like... I'm trying to find a good analogy for it. Like, when video games came out, everybody thought, video games are for boys, you know? Yeah. Even though they're just as cool and anybody can get into them. And slowly, little by little, you know it became something where it was like 
everybody can be into video games. And I think kind of specifically concept art, because it's so niche. Like, it, like, that I found out about concept art when I was young was like a miracle. Mm -hmm. I had like no idea. And I think a lot of that came from the internet um, that opened up a lot of doors for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. um, in the studio environment, like there's still ways to go for sure. Like when I was working at ILM, I was like the only woman to work there in the San Francisco office since Tara Whitlash. <laughs> so that's like, yo, that was like in Star Wars, like 10 years. Yeah. Um, and there were some funny moments, but it's one of those things where you're just like, eh, whatever, we're all painters. Um, and there's no, I, I don't think there's like one thing that made it be so. I think mm -hmm. it's just, you know, things that happen. I feel like to be an artist, period, is difficult regardless mm -hmm. of your gender. Mm -hmm. And so, and depending on where you're from in the world, you know, if you're born a woman, that can be difficult. I'm Hispanic, mm -hmm. and I'm lucky that my parents were very like, you can do whatever. <laughs> Otherwise, if I had born, been born under one of my aunts, I would have been like, well, it's time to have like 10 kids and like, you know, have fun. Not that, not that there's nothing wrong with that, but most of my family thought, no, you should be a nurse. That's what you should do. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that a lot of it depends on where you're from, you know, but... More importantly than where you're from, I think it's the addition of the internet and seeing so many amazing artists, both male and female, and getting excited at the possibility and prospect to do that, to be able to say, hey, you know what? You know, Terrell Whitlash does it, Claire Wendling does it, all these amazing women, and us well men, have come before, I can do it too. And it's true, I, every workshop that I see, every school that I go to, it's like 50-50. Mm -hmm. And there are more women inter entering the industry all over. Um, when I was uh, working at a mobile game studio, it was like a 50-50. Okay. And it was actually one of those things where it's like, for the longest time I always wondered, eh, this question is kind of, uh. but working at a studio where it was like 50-50, the artwork alone, was really interesting because there was a var variation of perspectives. Mm -hmm. uh, as exactly as where we come from, you know, what body, what gender we identify with, that has a say in your artwork. So you'll see things that perhaps someone will be able to catch and then someone, you know, will bring into the, the you know, the art mix. And it gives for more buried stories. I mean, it, it reflects more our reality rather mm -hmm. than, you know, what it's it nice is. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I'm, I'm, can I curse? No, no. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> fucking, I'm fucking stoked, dude. Because, like, <laughs> like, it, it is. It's, I'm seeing so many, many, you know, women and it come in all the time. And it's just, like, it's exciting. It's super exciting. It's kind of telling also that, like, Pretty much all the women are in the front right now. The majority of them are all women. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting. It's motivating. Cool. I dig it. Now that we've opened the floodgates on your cursing, everyone better watch out. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I've, 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 I've cooled it. I've uh, cooled it. Angry if you calls guys from know, my dad. Uh, that Sin Studio does a podcast. We did one with Carla. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Ap <laughs> Apple was not happy. No, I'm just kidding. It was fine. Screw them. Um, so I'm going to take a couple... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a couple questions that people submitted on the Facebook group. Um, so this one's from Zora Lenz, uh, Zora Lenz Kastner. That's How do you name. discover a new and unique shape or pattern for your concept art? And how hard line do you put it into the final character architecture landscape? There's a lot of slashes, so I, let's, break, let's do the first question. How do you discover a new and unique shape or pattern for your concept? My, my answer is to, to say no, you don't. Mm. Because I, I, like this, I like this Milton Glaser quote that is, I don't want to be original, I just want to be good. And that I've always gone with that, that like you don't try to find the new design or the original design, you find the right design to solve the problem that you're doing it. And if it's something that's been done a million times before, it's being done by you, so it's going to be different. Um, and that that's more important to the final 
presentation. So, but I'm willing to fight anybody who wants to. No, I think it's any challenge. Throw in. That's okay. Yeah. He's very good, isn't it? It depends a lot on what you're doing, right? I mean, I, I do mostly like industrial design themed things, and I walk the streets. I look at buildings. I look at the digger. I look at the taxi cab. I look at the street washing machine, whatever. Look at the the, the classical architecture over there. You, you see these, and then they become patterns in your subconscious. And depending on how you work, if you do line drawing, you sort of willfully create the shape. If you do, like, say, a, a chaotic noise photo bash where, where your subconscious recognizes patterns in that, then you, of course, reference your experience or, or your, your observation, if you will, and then you start to see shapes and, and flows of lines that you have noticed, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on what you're doing. Um, and I would say, so if you do stuff that works from the subconscious, then it's about observing, observing, observing. I think observing. it's way different than browsing reference on the web, just <coughs> your browsing, like you say, like industrial like shapes or structures. If you go there, if you go on the site, if you, you go like maybe uh, in an area that is forbidden and then you discover like a different uh, structure, mm -hmm. on, uh, that's w being there, seeing that with your eyes and maybe uh, climbing on the structures even would be mm -hmm. even more inspiring than just browsing pictures on the internet. Yeah, well, this, and and uh, to drill down. Um, oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, just, just real quick, just to drill down onto what I said before, like I'm not absolutely no original, but like <laughs> thinking, thinking that like <clears throat> what you say is right, like research and, and knowledge, like when you go and actually do the research and you understand, you know, why something is the way it is or why we've yeah. always done it a certain way, but then you know other ways that other cultures have done it or other ways yeah, yeah. that people have done it throughout time, it gives you a wider uh, library yeah. to, to pick from. But I yeah. think and, and also there's shapes that communicate. Like I yeah. think when you're dealing with characters and stuff and you're thinking about who this character is and the story that you want to tell with them, you have to think about the psychology of the audience receiving that mm -hmm. information. So you can't say, you know, you have to, if you do something that's super cute looking, you can't presume that the audience is going to assume that that's a villain or, or they have to be able to be designed in a way to represent who they are yeah. in that story. Yeah, 100% so. original is just abstract. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's all pattern recognition and, and referencing, so yeah. subconscious referencing of things that have existed in the past. Okay, now that we've solved that, sorry, could I just say? Yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. You know, there's, there's always that cliche thing that you hear from clients all the time, and it's I'm, I'm sure everybody here has heard that. Everybody in the audience has probably heard it as well. When you get asked, oh, could you show us something we've never seen before? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's cool. like. You know, it's Nobody well, that. yeah, that's, that's the impossible task. And also, nothing that we see anywhere, even stuff that, that's presented to you as completely new, you've seen it before, it, it resonates on some level, it's just got a twist and it's got an angle, it's been seen like through, like yeah. you were saying there, through a different cultural lens, yeah. mm -hmm. that kind of thing. That's where you get new stuff, and it's the clashing together of stuff that's worked before, and, but maybe hasn't worked together. Mm -hmm. That's where you get stuff that feels new but there's there's nothing new under the sun i think that's yeah. what it is yeah. you've just got to look from a different angle than other people mm. maybe that's where you get new things from i think I th maybe i have no idea <laughs> i also oh. yeah oh. i also yeah. think i don't know it's it's like yeah kind of musing on that like i've also heard a lot like for characters specifically like Make them badass. That's the All cliche. The That's like, it. make them cool. Make them badass. But the funny thing is that, like, um, like, yeah, it's it's a mixture of observation. It's a mixture of like getting like shapes that represent what it is. Um, we respond really well to basic geometry as well within character design. Um, so it's a mixture of like really just like taking something basic and then like making it a little bit more complex from research and things that you've, you know, done and painted and observed from life, at least, and, and try to make it right. I would mm -hmm. say one thing, when we talk about characters, you are sort of emoting emotion and values, human values that have existed for millions mm -hmm. of years, right? So they're very, uh, almost like, like iconic, generic, and you, you recognize them instantly, uh, something that appeals to your maternal side, something that appeals to your go to war side, whatever that is, right, right, shapes and lines and all that stuff. So that's like beha behavior or attitude. And then on the technical side, you have fabrics and, and, and maybe science, uh, maybe there's a new product in existence that is produced in a certain way that when you take it apart, you see how it's fabricated, and then that becomes a new shape and then maybe that becomes trendy and you know stuff that uh, for me it's uh, 
I always uh, working as a function. My f always thinking that this uh, that function uh, dictates the shape. Mm -hmm. So before before all of this, you have to understand what you are doing, what people are asking to you, and uh, after this, we make some research. This is a good part. Being cu stay curious and be and trying to understand what's happened here, what's happening here, uh, what the industry already does. I mean, uh, if you would like, I specialize for max and sci-fi and things. So uh, I'm always looking for what's in, this is a new advanced take, you sure. know, for an arm and something. And originality came after this. Mm -hmm. You know, you're putting everything, you're finding ideas in what already exists or. or uh, or the newest thing. Uh, and uh, yes, it's come from there, I think, for me. First, you have to understand, you have knights, you have a badass guy, you have a something guy. And after, after this, you can maybe choose that, okay, my badass guy might be a thin guy. But after mm -hmm. exploring, you know, all the things that that's, uh, dictates actually the shape. So uh, if you have a prison, you know, might be not be made made of wood. I think maybe maybe you're thinking of stones and things. If you're talking about medieval things, starting to if you if you're talking about sci-fi sci prison, you you maybe might be interested uh, into uh, security systems, you know, and uh, how they organize themselves in prison, how the architecture is made for the prison through the ages, and uh, all this kind of stuff, you know, and uh, all these informations, you know, and uh, all the things that you learn will give real form, you know, we will give you the shape of your final product. But after this, the originality and maybe for the previous question, you know, the, uh, the style and saying like this, it just came into the eyes of the spectator. You know, if you are, if you're doing your, 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 your job honestly and uh, right through, you know, and the, in the right way, uh, I think that the answer from the public's uh, reaction, from the public, make it original, make, you know, make a uh, uh, I mean, make your style re a real thing because uh, I don't know if it's in, on the table. Everybody could define his style. <laughs> <No> <laughs> could <one>. you? <laughs> no? Shall we? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Define your, your style. style. Yeah. I don't know. It's, what, it's, what style? I don't know. I can't answer your this. Your style is defined by the shortcuts you take to get to the result. Yeah. Yes. And I think what you like, like how you like to draw things, like people will always, you'll, I don't know, I just I take it from my time at Disney because it would take us sometimes months to get a whole team in sync with the character that we were mm. going to work on. Like you're you're trying it, it's amazing how you can have twenty people all drawing the same character. You have thorough model sheets, rotations, everything of this one singular character, and everyone's drawing style comes out too much and you're trying to keep the character believable. You don't want the audience to watch it and say, oh, that was Mark's scene there and that was <laughs> Sam's scene. And, um, and so we would fight to unify our style. So for me, seeing that, I've, I've never been concerned about how my style would blossom because I see that it's just a natural thing. People, people have an inclination of how you, you like to draw eyes, how you like to draw hands. Like, e even on a very superficial level, your, your drawing and your design abilities, it's so diverse. So I think if you just trust in, in building that fire and building mm -hmm. your technique and just becoming a great artist and being open to learning, it's just going to fall into place naturally. It's not something you force. It's just my, my two cents. <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know this whole style. We, we keep we always keep coming back to style because I think it's the it's the question that gets asked most when you're talking mm. to people who are either at school or fresh out of school, and it, it is that. It's like as as soon as you pick up something that makes a mark, how your muscles work, how your eyes work, how how you hold something. As soon as you make a mark, that's your style coming through, and it's you have to. It's following your instincts as well. We, we all, when, when we start as well, we're always copying our favorite artists. And everybody's work is a, it's a collision of all those kind of influences and artists that, that you, you followed. Because I, you know, I grew up copying my favorite artists. We all do. Don't be afraid of that. But there, there comes a point where you just have to think, am I just, a, am I just doing generic? Am I just a copyist? Mm -hmm. Or do I have something else to bring to the table? You know? it's, I think that's quite an important thing. But style, style is a, yeah. it's a dead end, it's a yeah. blind alley, don't bother with that. I'd rather, I'd rather one focuses, rather than spend all your energy worrying about, am I original, am I style, is this stylish? 
pretend you're a scientist and learn things. Pretend you're a psychologist mm -hmm. and learn how people, you know, why people think. Um, pretend you're an actor. Start emoting with your body. You mm -hmm. know, imagine you're a director and set up scenes and those become paintings. Like, there's much more you could do with your time than think, it's just a one true shape, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> we finally yeah. found it. Found it. Ah, shit, it's I'm just a done. triangle. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm, I mean, to, Triangle. To, to kind of find things that maybe haven't been seen before or haven't been seen in that way is to, to look at the generic mm -hmm. and think, you know, why, why is that used over and over again? It's because it's, it's the, that thing with cliches. Cliches become cliches because they're kind of truisms mm -hmm. and they play yeah. to what people believe in. You know, why bad guys are dressed in red? Why they're angular, all that but kind of stuff. It depends too where it is, because if it's like depends yeah. on the color and where yeah. it's going yeah. to be seen. But that's that's really like kind of um, kind of exciting because it's like in some ways also you don't want to be too original that mm. no one knows, no one can relate to it. Yeah. Some of the best concept work starts from something real and then gets changed a little yeah. bit. But even that, you can always like kind of tell where it came from. You mm. can identify with it in and, some ways and kind of play with those truisms and subvert them just say right okay we've got this can we can we make an angular language for this character can, mm -hmm. can we make that acceptable and romantic and the kind of hero because you you always get that uh, mm -hmm. with disney you know you, you get that kind of classic stuff it's like you know you have to hate this guy and we we know we have to hate him just by how he's designed and stuff but it's like it's playing with those rules it's understanding those rules and why they're there but then just breaking them slightly is, is where you'll get interesting stuff it's from. It's audience manipulation, yeah. basically. It's, it's just knowing the, it's exactly, I mean, that's how I see it. It's like a psychology thing. It's mm -hmm. just knowing how do you want to tell your story? How do you want to play with the mind of your audience? And do you want it to be, all, like, the seeds have to be there. Like, even if it's a character that's not, like, Pixar does it really well. Like, the villain in Toy Story of this cute teddy bear. But there was something kind of wrong with him. Like, there was something <laughs> off, you know? And, and so you can't just have something... I think like what you were saying, like it can't be so far from what we understand that no one sees it coming. I think the, the, the great thing about a great reveal in a story is that, is when the audience has this aha moment, but it was aha because you're like, oh my gosh, it was there the whole time and mm -hmm. I didn't see it. It's not when it just came out of left field and you're like, what? That's not a, I, I find that's not a great reveal. So even if you want to disguise your, your character that you don't want them to look like, like the stereotype, like a villain that looks cute or, or a hero that maybe is like a, a, you know, like a, what is it, the Byron, the Byronic hero, the anti-hero type, mm -hmm. um, you know, that maybe you want him to look dark or her to be dark and brooding, but they're actually heroic. Like there still has to be something there that we believe them to be what they'll turn out to be, if that, mm -hmm. I don't know if yeah. that makes sense. So, so I think it's important to have those not stereotypes, but you mm -hmm. said it well, truisms or, or things that, that, it's just because that's what we know, it's what we understand. And but that's the eternal reference that has been true yeah. for all of time mm -hmm. in many yeah. ways, what you're talking about, that, those values. And, 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 and for us, like for, for mechanical nerds like us, it's, exactly. it's the same, that's a, it's, but it's just functionality. <laughs> it's, yeah. It has to work like this because otherwise it would break. Like, so when you say learn about how things work and become a problem solver, mm -hmm. you're, the, you're a designer, you're not an artist in certain respects, uh, and you're a psychologist, an understander, and a person who understands human nature, and then you blend those things together, mm -hmm. and you bring people in, you make them feel safe, things work, people act in an appropriate way, they look in an appropriate way, and then you switch it on them, right? Uh, yeah. So do you prefer mechanical nerds or mecha nerds? Uh, equally, Ooh. I'm, not, I'm yeah. not exclusive. Okay. <laughs> 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 So Sean Elizabeth uh, Russell had a question that they submitted on Facebook, which is, what is the most helpful thing you've done personally to push past doubts, insecurities, and imposter syndrome? Ooh. Has someone come alongside you to encourage and support you through that period? Is it a question of how many times a week we put <laughs> yeah. yeah. And has, has imposter syndrome ever worn off for anybody? Yeah. I, I don't think you have. Yeah. I, I haven't right met now. anybody uh, who has passed it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. So what, <laughs> what do you do to cope with your imposter syndrome? I don't know, man. Uh, especially for myself, I'm coming from the graffiti, uh, you know, uh, 
and uh, most of the time you are alone, you know, in a, uh, alone in, a, in the in the backyard and doing your thing. <laughs> and, but most of the time we are invited to festival and things during concerts or things like this. And most of the time we uh, found ourselves with uh, hundreds of thousands of people, you know, looking at you, you know, in your back. And most of the time you could hear what they are saying about you. Oh. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, we can find two kind of people. It depends on the character. Uh, for, my, for myself, my side, it, it pushed me uh, mm -hmm. forward because uh, I automatically I shut my mind, I shut my, my ears and I decided to do just my shit, you know, honestly, the way I would like to do because graffiti is this, you know, liberty, freedom and nobody has to tell you what to do and how to do and is, that's exactly what I'm doing now as a concept artist. I don't care about facial brushing or drawing. I'm taking the best and efficient way to do what I, get, I want to get and uh, that's it. And I don't care. I don't give a fuck about give <laughs> 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 about about everyone is thinking about what I'm posting. It's working. Cool. It doesn't work. I don't care. I'm happy with my shit, and it's okay like this. And I'm okay like this. And as far as I can get my contract, it's enough contract to make a living and raise my boys, you know, in a decent way. I'm okay with this. Mm -hmm. All the rest is just. Uh, so the answer is just don't give a fuck. Or you have a different yeah. yeah, go, <laughs> yeah. go, go. Just do. I just, just have do. A, a note to that. I think it's about we talked about it earlier. Like, don't pre uh, imposter syndrome and stuff. If you expect you yourself to have an answer, mm -hmm. you get n nervous and you're like, I don't really like. Put that aside. You, we are on a journey together, exploring. Art is exploration. Of course, it's communication and there's clarity and all of that has its place. But in general, it's about learning. So it's, it, instead of your art being a, a, an answer to a question by the group, it's a question to the group. So that you leave your responsibility behind you and you just say, what about this? And then they will say yes or no. It's not up to you to say, here it is. And it's true. <laughs> it's, like, it's up to the people to decide. So you've got to leave your responsibility behind and explore with the audience you're sharing your art with. Yeah. Um it's it's really interesting because that's that's it. Like I, I actually think that all those things are part of being an artist. Um, so most of us going to be in the talk tomorrow. So shit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. Like I cope with it by thinking, reminding myself that I've been in rooms full of great artists, and they're all at one point they'll be like, uh, I mean, you see it earlier. Tell us about what makes you unique. <laughs> so I, I think about, you know, I think about that. I think about how we're all kind of in this together. That and I just stare at the dark, empty void as it stares back at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that got dark. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, for, for us all to do this, I mean, for, for me certainly, I think being the... To do the kind of jobs that we do, you need to be a certain kind of person. Or you don't need to be a certain kind of person. But generally... Um, I don't think this goes for Carla, but I'm a kind of an introvert, I'm introspective <laughs> and stuff and it's because we, we, we sit alone, we sit alone and we build our worlds from our heads and stuff like that. Um, so for us to be doing this is the most unnatural thing in the world for me, you know, because it's, mm. it, it's almost like you all sit there thinking that we have the answers to stuff because oh. you, you're asking us for answers and it's like we don't, we're exactly the same as everybody else. Mm. We make it up as we go along. and. I, I kind of do these things because my wife tells me, you should really do that. You should leave the house. <laughs> yeah, leave the house. Put some pants on and get, get out, out of the house. Good you know, that that kind of thing. A that, that's shower. a mental image that you don't want to have in your head. But it's, ju it's just generally that. It's like, you know, we, we don't... Uh, it's, we shouldn't be saying we don't have any answers because you might as well all just walk out the door. But we're all making it up as we go, we react to mm -hmm. situations that we find ourselves in and, you know. I, I kind of like to think about, um, you know, I, it's true, I don't, we don't have all the answers, but, you know, the path to becoming a professional artist is fairly similar. So the way I like to see it is, you know, there's many different routes you can take and I can tell you the ter ter terrain of the route that I took. Mm -hmm and say, hey, you know, watch out, by the fork of this road, there's like a big dip, you might mess up your ankle, you know, that's literally, but, but it's, it's a road for everybody, and it's, it's kind of similar tra uh, trajectory. Yeah. And, um, and those routes make you the artist that you are. <coughs> mm -hmm. those, that, the route that you take will give you the voice that you have, which is going to be different to everybody else's. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I, um, I, art, art can be a, a really decept, like a dangerous trap for all of us to fall into because it's, it's a very visible thing. It's something that you, know, you, you put it up online and people can see it right away or they can look in your book. And you, know, you can put stuff on ArtStation or on Instagram or whatever and you start piling up the likes and you start feeling validated as a, as a, as a person, as a human. And then you can start to tie your identity into who you are as an artist. And I had a moment, I, have, um, I had a moment where my five-year-old daughter uh, brought me a drawing that she had done of a flower that she had picked in the garden. And it was this little representation. You could tell she was observing it. And it was, it was just beautiful. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's a five-year-old's drawing. It's unsophisticated, in it, but, it, but, it's, but it's lovely. And I, I, I had this moment where I realized um, I love her so much that this drawing could just disappear, blow in the wool away in the wind, be lit on fire, and it would have no bearing on how valued she is and how loved she is. And that idea that, like, that same thing applies to the work that we do. You know, like, find your identity in something bigger, in something else, because you are no more valued for the drawings of whatever you do than, um, mm -hmm. uh, than my five-year-old daughter is loved or cherished for the drawings that she does. Um, so I think just separating yourself. Yeah. And um, this this sucks because again tomorrow that's like literally one of the points. But no, that's the key. That's the key to it because you have to separate yourself in order to be able to observe it and and strategize with it and and think about how to improve it. Um, you can't like you can't be so attached to it and make it such a part of your identity. That's dangerous because if you mess up, that means you're a failure, mm -hmm. and that's not true. It, you know, and that's that's a big pitfall from a lot of people. So yeah. So if you're too attached, you can't step back and gain any perspective. All right, um, those are great answers, guys. Um, I have a kind of to switch tracks to something now. Uh, I guess less inspirational, but uh, also interesting. We've got a question from um, Facebook from one of our students, Steph. Uh, uh, Tastan, and the question is, what is the one thing you are sick and tired of seeing in every concept art illustration? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, I won't answer the so who wants to start off? Yeah. I, don't, I, have no, I don't want to answer this before. <laughs> but mine, mine, I would say, it's not specifically what I'm seeing in concept art, it's oh. just that I'm seeing uh, uh, marketing art called concept art. Yeah. Sure. And I think that does huge damage to up-and-coming concept artists in their, their psyche of what they think it, it is supposed to so be. So concept art is my Instagram account. Look what I'm eating. Look what beach I'm at. Nah, yeah. that's not your life. Your concept art is not your concept art. That's polished yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's it. You know what? Um, marketing art is all the photos you post, and uh, real concept art is all the tagged photos. Yeah, or it's, in the, mm. it's in the trash can. It's never released. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I don't know, man. It's just uh, maybe... For, I, don't, I don't really understand this question because, first of all, who are you? Who, who, who are we to, 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 to decide which is good or not? And, and secondly, I, I think that there's food and drinks for everyone. Yes. And uh, it's just a matter of balance. You know, you can see it in the music and in everything. Actually, you, you have brands. You have uh, an original artist who uh, starting something and bread? everybody. The original artist. Now bread, bread. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry for my English. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, thank you, Erasmus. And, uh, and uh, you know, you have uh, loads of followers behind this, and uh, uh, it works till someone is fed up, or some part of the public is fed up, and someone in the marketing, uh, I don't know where, uh, just uh, get the ID, okay, they're fed up now, you are changing. Uh, for example, you have for 10 years now, we are, you are fed with a superheroes movie, you know, before this it was zombie, before this was maybe Max. Ne mm. Next, uh, you can see it coming now, it's uh, um, adaptation from video games. You know, Ubisoft is totally in it. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, <laughs> now, first of all, hey, sorry, but uh, hey, it was announced in the press. You know, it was official. No? Amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, I saw Assassin's Creed, so Assassin's Creed, can, you know, it doesn't come from the void, <laughs> actually. So, uh, I don't know. But uh, I know that 
everybody in the industry in video games is thinking about you know going into the movie industry and things like this because uh, Hollywood's trying to renew you know the license for the next ten or fifteen years, and uh, that's how it works. That's how it is now. Uh, people looking for licenses. So I don't know. You know now you're gonna have a lot of this, and tomorrow you're gonna have a lot of that. You know, deep, it deep, there's no. You can say anything, you can do everything you want, doesn't change this. So I don't know, I don't get the point of doing, oh, there's too much of this, too much of that, you know? You're not the one who's deciding which going to be in the industry. It's not our, mm. not our process. Yeah. We are concept artists. Yeah. So, so sorry. We, we are yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Except, <laughs> except, <laughs> except if you're creating your own IP, yeah. you know? You're still a concept true. artist true. with yeah, an artistic true. director and the license and a product. And you have to deliver because you're a professional. If you're not good with this, come back to yours and create your own IP. It's simple as this. Mm -hmm. And well, you think, will see. You know, to tie in with that, and I, I'm, I'm on Carl's side with this. It's like, I'm sick of seeing flying ships. <laughs> <laughs> but you have this, maybe you have the chance that somebody break my fingers. For now, I'm I, sick yeah. I love your flying ships, ships by the way, yeah, and I got some little kids. But it's yeah. called it's like water, Ian. Thing. It's just a thing. It's, it's just a but thing uh, that you do. Just, yeah. add yeah. water. just add water, Ian. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know, man. But, I think but it's, it's really <laughs> why, why I pen flying ships is because water, water is really it's fucking hard to pin. I get it. So you just take it out of there, and it's like. That's world building for you. Just avoid yeah. the things you don't like, and all of a sudden you have an original universe that's based off your lack of skill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> Write that one down, everybody. It's the best one you're going to get out of Just don't draw the shit that you find hard. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do it with lighting. So that was a divisive <laughs> question, but uh, how about this one? A little more kind of future oriented. Um, what do you think about the use of VR and AR tools in the Ooh. art pipeline? It's evil and it's tearing apart this industry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just like video games and film and books did and written language. I No, it's... it's Every new medium comes in and people get freaked out and then they start using it and then they get over the gimmicks that everybody's doing and then eventually it's a storytelling medium and everybody loves it. It's so, it's so frustrating for me because like I tried it yeah. and it makes me feel like such a caveman <laughs> because I'm like, oh, I really want to try and I'm like, oh, this is crazy. No, I don't, I don't get it. But, and then I just go back to my caveman tools oil painting. I'm like, who does that anymore? Yeah. It's so cool though. Yeah. Like, it's like... Mm. And VR in particular, yeah. um, so my, my boyfriend is a video game designer. Mm -hmm. And for video game designers, VR is insane because they're doing studies that actually VR influences in some ways how your brain works. They did tests with people um, that, um, for example, they got to play a superhero. And like two weeks after, the people who played superhero, you know, were more were nicer, were a little bit more charitable. Then they had the other group that paid villains, and those people became more bastard-like for two <laughs> weeks. Um, so when are we seeing GTA and VR? Yo, oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> VR is going to, like, we don't fully understand it yet. Um, as artists, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. Because in or, you know, you'll be able to see things that, uh, who knows, might, yeah, might actually know. change how your brain thinks. It um, the brain. It's so it interesting. The brain. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, but we don't know. Like, scientifically, we have no idea what VR is going to do. Artistically, that's like a whole amazing frontier. Super stoked for it. It's, um, I, was, I, I always thought it was a bit of a gimmick, because un until I had a go of one, my friend had a rift. And, um, and I was like, because I'd say... 3D movies and stuff, and I'm like, well, it's just, it's not really changing anything. It's just giving you that extra little bit of depth and blah, blah, blah. But when I put those goggles on, and uh, he just played me through some of the demos that come with the, the Rift, and I, I really don't like heights. I've got a real fear of heights. I suffer from vertigo quite badly. And there was one of these things, he just dropped me into this demo, and it's like a fifth element kind of world where you're kind of five miles up in the air with his skyscrapers and flying ships flying past. And I nearly fell off my seat. It was that. And at that moment, I thought, this is something different. This is an, an experience that we've never had before. And, I thought, and that was when I thought, this, this isn't a, a gimmick. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, right, it, it's, it's what you do with the narrative in that, mm -hmm. I think. It opens up so many different things with narrative potential. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's a tool like anything else. Well, but it was, oh yeah, it was scary. It's, it's really cool to be like at this stage in when it's coming online because mm -hmm. like you hear stories about um, when when movies were first being introduced, they would have like a footage of a train coming towards the camera, and people would scream and run out of the room because they thought they were going to get hit, you know. And like and that's how we're that reacting to this did. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Ah! and fell off my chair. It was yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Of course, but maybe they watched Looney Tune cartoons, so they were expecting a train to really come through. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's I, I I haven't really tried out those you know tilt brush stuff yet, but I would really like to. Me too. Um, yeah. It looks amazing and scary when you come from a 2D background as well because it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, there's a whole world of shit out there, I'm, you know. I'm, the horror war is going to be Jetsons yeah. and I'm Flintstones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, I've got another question actually from uh, Loic. So, you can spend a day with an artist, dead or alive, who do you pick? And what do you do, what do you spend your day doing? I don't know how much fun you'd have with a dead artist, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> imagine you could, you could make them alive, yeah. So you could choose any artist from history and they would be alive. Yeah. Be like Weekend at Bernie's, right? Yeah. John Singer Sargent for me, I, would, yeah. I stalk him. I stalk him. I would totally nice. pick John Singer Sargent, but I don't know if I'd want to learn. So what would you do during your day with him? Would you just paint all day or? No, I think I would want to draw with him. Oh. Because I, I just, I love, like when you, well, see, that's what's hard because I'd want to learn to paint from her too because he's just so good. You only have one day. He's just so good. I you know, can blame Loic for that. Yeah. It's a lot of, I mean, I've read so many notes of his and stuff, but the thing I love about Sargent, because that, that era is, just for myself, it's just one of my favorite eras in, in art and um, I just love like his, uh, maybe it's my animator side, but you see a sergeant and it's alive. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I just, I always have this memory of being at the National Portrait Gallery in London and I didn't know all of his paintings that, I knew they had his paintings, but I didn't know all of them. And just like going there to see his paintings and then there's this whole corridor and I saw this one portrait at the end of the corridor and I had never seen it before and I didn't know it was his, but it was just alive. And I was like, who did this? And you run after it and, you're, and then you see the little thing and it's, of course, it's Sargent. And there's just a life in his work that, this invisible, intangible, living moment that he always captures that I don't see, like I see great work, but that's something that I love about his. So that's why I don't know, I'd have to ask him like to train me in that because I don't know if that would be through his painting, through his drawing. I mean, his drawings are the same. They're just rich and amazing and alive. It's just his way of thinking, so. That's, that's mine. Sorry, okay, I'm, stop, I, I'm done geeking out over such shit. That was yeah. <laughs> that's my, that's my favorite. <laughs> I think it would be uh, Moebius, mm -hmm. so I can ask him, you know, oh, yeah. what kind of mushrooms do you <laughs> yeah. take? Yeah. And <laughs> so that's what you do yeah. all day? Trip out. Uh, yeah, I would do yeah. that all day with you. Yeah. 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 Nice. This is this is hard because I kind of want to be like a necromancer and just raise a whole horde of dead artists. <laughs> like, there's too many. There's also so many fantastic artists that are alive right now. Uh, this is hard. You got to answer. Duh. <laughs> like, can I can I do living and also dead? Like, if I had a choice with two. You mean like you find someone Screw who's it, living I'm gonna go for it. and murder um, them so, and bring them yeah, back? Yeah, no, yeah. no. Screw it. Um, living um, Miyazaki, mm. just because like like. And not even just, I would just like to like listen to him talk all day <laughs> about philosophy and art, because that guy, that guy's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, dead, oh man, that one's hard. Just a lot of really amazing. But I was going to say Sergeant, but I'm going to go for okay. Alfonso Muka. seven, I get Sergeant. No, that's okay. <laughs> you get Sergeant. I'm going to say Alfonso Muka, but I want to go back in time mm -hmm. so I can go see him do the Slav epic, because cool. those paintings are just so massive and the way that he paints is like it's really interesting it's almost like uh shit i know it in spanish puntillismo oh. puntillismo okay. yeah yeah where it's like it's kind of dappled dappled it's kind of like dappled and layered where it's like you can kind of he uses like the yellows of like the background that kind of seeps through and just his composition his colors it's amazing so that's who i you know, I get two. Cool. So, yeah, I we'll did bring it. bring them for the next gathering. Yes. Nice. <laughs> um, unless <laughs> anyone else wants to break in, what I'll do is uh, I'll take a couple more questions from what I have prepared here. 
And then we'll do a few audience questions, like maybe three or four audience questions and see how that goes. And then maybe we'll go back to that or keep going with the audience questions. Um, so my next question is actually one that Adam Goldstein directed at you, Rafael Lacoste. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to flip it around to everybody who has worked, uh, you know, because we have several people here. Basically, um, the question is, do you work, do you miss working on films? And do you see yourself switching back? Uh, and what is the biggest negative point on working in games as compared to working on film and vice versa? <laughs> and so we'll let you start, but then we can move it to other artists, like I do, guess Carla, you've worked on. Do I have to say, on... like, uh, every detail about... Uh... What I like and what I don't like. In <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> give us the highlights. Okay, highlights. Uh, high level. Um, I would say, okay, we had already these kind of discussions, but uh, I love uh, to work for the film industry because uh, that was very new for me, and I learned a lot. I think it's uh, also a very old industry, so I met a lot of senior people, uh, incredible artists uh, like uh, Yannick Dussault, uh, Mathieu Reynaud. These guys are from Montreal, but they're, they're amazing matte painters. Uh, so just for you know, environment design and matte painting, I, I found it, it was an amazing experience. I learned a lot, not only on the technical uh, aspect, but also on really how to create an interesting image composition, how to create a credible environment, how to create an immersive image. Um, so I've been doing matte painting, but also um, concept art for film. Uh, I worked a bit on uh, Jupiter Sending and uh, Immortals. And, uh, I really loved the experience because it was very high level during the pre-pre-conception, even before having the green light. So uh, that was very creative. But I didn't like the matte painting part because I found it's, it was very uh, technical. And it's, it's getting more and more technical, I think, now. I'm not this kind of person who wants to, to build like every single detail of the image in 3D. Like now they have to like do, like it's almost like doing high level, you know, high resolution level art, you know. You're not painting anymore. You're not using Photoshop. It's almost like camera projection and modeling everything in 3D. So I found my, a film was a bit more technical and maybe too technical for me. I had more freedom in. Uh, I felt more in, interest in uh, in the concept art. So back in video game, uh, being an art director, I, I feel I have more creativity. So it's uh, it's a great challenge to be able to to work with a team, amazing artists, and give more direction. So I can really craft, give the direction, craft the the world with the the team. Uh, it was less the case in the film, but uh, we have also many constraints in the, you know, in the game industry. Where there's a lot of players, it's very political. We have uh, you know many directors and people who are like more technical and uh, people who are like really into uh, programming and extremely like uh, technical. You know, so th there's a lot of different kind of personality who like uh, collide. I would say so. It's it's very tough to create something that is interesting, creative, with such different kind of mindsets, you know, with the producers, uh, programmers, game designers, script writers, and we have a lot of different egos, and so that's a big challenge. I would say that there's no, I would, wouldn't say that I prefer film or game. I think uh, they're both like very different and challenging. And anyone else have anything to add to the films versus games debate? It's the same. Uh, I don't know if it's versus. <laughs> it's almost the um, same. Yeah, it's similar. It's very similar. Mm. Uh, when I started in games, um, the only limitation, and it really wasn't a limitation, but it was just the, the engine. Can the engine support your ideas? Um, but I worked in games, and I worked in a very old game uh, that, that, for example, if you wanted to add capes, they didn't have the technology for cloth. Um, that afterwards shortly uh, went to mobile, mobile, and mobile also developing industry. So the technical limitations are certainly there, um, but you get creative. You find certain solutions that you wouldn't have done otherwise if you'd gone with like, oh, you know, like your initial thing. So um, film is is super fun, um, but they're both really fun. You, I've worked with some incredible people on both. Um, and so it's all I, good. It's so similar. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, similar. it's true. I, I, my, what, what I've found, I mean, I, I worked in games for 20 years, and mm -hmm. I've only been working in film for three or four years now, something like that. Mm -hmm. And But in those 20 years, I worked on maybe seven or eight titles. In the three years I've been working in film, I've worked on like a dozen or more things. Because it takes five years to make a game. Or it took us five years to make a game, anyway. Mm -hmm. 
in movies, you're on, and doing concept art in movies, you're on for maybe two months, three months tops, mm -hmm. and you're shifting, you're flying all around the world, meeting all sorts of fantastic people, and meeting your heroes. I mean, I've got good friends who I, who I spent 20 years with making those games. Still friends now, and they're, they're still doing that kind of stuff, but you meet so many diverse people, mm -hmm. or, or the chance to meet all of those people in work, working in film, that's, I, I wouldn't change that. It's yeah. been, that's it's been really cool. Detail you're saying also the time we spend in creation on a big AAA game, we can spend like maybe one year in conception, yeah, so you're super creative. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And well, then we can spend yeah. like fucking four years <laughs> on production and then one year on debug. So mm -hmm. the creative process is really important, but it's at the beginning and then after we switch, you know, the roles, we're more like uh, into more like direction, a fireman, but less into the creative process. And in the film, you know, you, you can work like on two months on something and then you switch different yeah. topic and it's cool, it's cool to be able to switch. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's sometimes frustrating in that you don't feel like you've got, you, you don't feel like you're as connected as you are when you're part of a dev team and you're doing it for five years because you're mm. daily working, you, you're working on the same thing you know, for a kind of a week and it's a small thing and you tweak and then you come back to it like three years later because it's yeah. technology's changed. You know, that, that kind of stuff that you get to do. With film, just by the, the very nature, it's a very rapid turnaround. Mm -hmm. You feel like sometimes you're, you're not as involved as sometimes you, you like to be. But you kind of, you know, you just have to knuckle down and get on with that. So yeah. my next question is, uh, did social media have a big impact on your career and what do you think are the best or worst methods of using it? So I'll open this up to everybody. You know, what are your favorite platforms for promoting yourself as an artist? Do any of you live stream? Uh, you know, what do you find is working for you and what do you find just really didn't work? I think, um, I don't know. I think social media is at its best when you connect with others. And like when you use it as a place for inspiration and knowledge, I think it's at its worst when you use it as a vanity project. When you attach how many likes you have on something, whether to if it's good or bad, or whether you're good or bad, or you know, it's 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 wild. Um, I like I like Facebook. I like. Instagram, but uh, Instagram is pretty straightforward, so I think I kind of prefer it. Um, Twitter's fun too, yeah. I, but, but I fight it, with people on Twitter yeah, most I, of the time. I probably <laughs> wouldn't be sat here doing this if if it wasn't for that's true. When I joined Twitter, because mm -hmm. it was I'm I'm generally reticent to do anything that's any technology that's new, because I'm mm -hmm. very old indeed, and sometimes you just look at something and you think, no, that's probably not for me. But again, my wife said, you should get on there because there's, there's, there's loads of really cool artists on there who you will like. And the thing about Twitter is you can talk. If um, Mobius or Ralph McQuarrie that, you know, was saying, who, who would you bring back from the dead? Hmm. I mean, I just, like to, I, I just want to sit and watch people working. I would, I would like to sit and watch how, when he got a script, those first lines that he made on layout paper with a fine liner, what, what's his thinking when he's doing that? Anyway, but that kind of stuff. If he was around today and he was on Twitter, you could ask him a question, and hopefully he might respond, because they do. I, I connected with Alan Lee last week, because he was doing this online um, Twitter chat thing, and um, one of my friends kind of said, Alan Lee's on here, so I, I retweeted Alan Lee. You know, the, Al, Alan Lee did mm -hmm. the Rings stuff, oh, the rings, he yeah. concepted those movies, and he's just a brilliant artist. I've been a fan of his for like 30 years or something, and I got into a conversation with him, and I was such a fanboy. <laughs> and that's the fantastic thing about Twitter. You can, you can talk to people whose work you admire. And I've, I mean, you know, linking with Raft, stuff like that, who I'd, I'd loved his work for years and stuff. And then suddenly we connected over Twitter and then we met in LA and stuff. And, you know, and now he drags me out at pubs late at night and gets me drunk when I shouldn't wait, really be doing wait, that. that's different. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's that you, you get a chance to... Um, ask questions of people whose work you really admire and you wouldn't ever have been able to do that before the internet. I, I, was, I was working in video games before the internet was a thing, <laughs> didn't exist. And you tell that to a lot of young'uns these days and they're like, you just mean the doesn't compute. the internet of things wasn't a thing? <laughs> just the internet in general. Oh, it's, the oh my God. It, it just wasn't yeah. anything. When, when we first got the internet in our studio, there was about 15 websites. 
I'm not joking. There was, there was and know, they were all porn, Amazon, right? It was Google. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was dark net. Okay. I think. But you know, but it's if if it hadn't been for me getting on Twitter and making connections like that and seeing that there was a world outside the jo the salary job I was doing, it gave me the confidence to go freelance, yep. which is why I'm here doing this kind of thing now. So yeah, cool. without that, um, I would probably still have been doing that job, which is fine. It's great, but it opens up your opportunities massively. Use Anyone it. else use social media in another way that kind of had an impact on their career? I, don't know. I had a chat with, uh, with Matt about it in the, in the prep room. We talked about having our education, informal education on the internet back in the forum days, back uh, mm -hmm. Sijun, uh, Eatpoo forums, whatever, like, way, like 15 years ago, whatever, yeah. where there was no social media as such, but like everybody has said here, mm -hmm. it was about the human connection, yeah. and it was about sharing stories, sharing learning, and failing in front of each other, and everybody pitching in to help. So rather, it, rather than it being commercialist connection tool with likes and, mm -hmm. and, and handshakes and thumbs up, it was just like, here's my lame idea, what do you think? And so in that sense, I think a lot of us, and we talked about the art scene in Montreal as well, lots of artists, from in and around here that you've talked to a lot of them as well, uh, have grown up on the early forums before they were really, before everything exploded. And that means that we are all from that university, university of the early forum internet. So in that sense, it was a huge influence on me while I was in university uh, studying um, design and uh, communication. And I, I got my whole concept art education yeah. from the forums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I um same here. I mean, I didn't were when I was this when I was growing up, I there was no art scene where I was. Um I grew up in Puerto Rico, so it's like the most isolated little island in the Caribbean. And you know, forums whereas now it's social media. That's how I found out, oh, whoa, this exists. Like this is a thing. So, you know, yeah, it's it's Had kind of a it's kind of yeah. a big deal. It's like a it's like a it's like the force, right? You use it for good. You're good, yeah. Yeah. but it, if you go dark side, it turns you all haggard. Yeah, I think and this, this good, <laughs> this good ways to use it, and bad ways to use it, is mm -hmm. um, don't criticize people because it'll come well. Because as soon as you post something, it's there forever. Mm -hmm. So be very uh, judicious about what you share with people. Be very careful about um, criticizing people who's they're just they're trying to get on this, the same as you. And if if you if you're creating anything, you know how hard it is to get anything out there and then to share it with people. It's very very difficult. So I try not to. I'm sure we do sometimes. It's sometimes oh I don't quite like this and stuff like that. But <laughs> try to be positive. And the thing about Twitter is, I because I, I use Twitter most of all, um, is it can be such an incredible force for good, but it can flip very easily into a bullying, horrible, nasty place, you know? So just try and be positive in, in your outlook all the time. Post good work. And don't also, when I was first on Twitter, I, I, I always used to think I have to post finished, polished things, but it's not. It's, it's a fantastic way to see your progression from sketch work to finished things and stuff like that. And don't think that you, you have to, it has to be this, absolutely this final statement that you're putting out there it's showing your practice and but i would say use it if if you're not using it then as artists it's a fantastic way to promote your work and that's not in a kind of cynical marketing kind of way sure it's showing you exist but maybe mm -hmm. you, you say promote your work, but promote it while accepting that it's a journey of learning. Yeah, like You say completely. so, it, it's about we, the sharing, we, we're so all promotion, on a sure, journey, but... You know? Yeah. 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 But, uh, sorry. So you can accept the, the, the critics when they are like, uh, helping you to improve and get some feedback. Yeah. This is what I like in the, we, when we had the, the forums, we were on City Talk and all this stuff. Uh, there was a lot of threads and a lot of feedback. Now we don't see that much that. And uh, it's like really like, 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 amazing, amazing. Yeah, but yeah. we don't have the, this no, kind of line of feedback, and uh, I kind of miss that. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have the likes, but when you got the pick on the front page, that was really helpful. So, so you think still exist, though. Yeah. Get yeah, on, but get on in, in another way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the same success. That's sure, success. sure. But, but uh, it's a very tricky way, it's especially for me, because I made all my career with 
and thanks to the to the social media because I'm brand new in the industry, only 10 years old, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I started at 30. But uh, I have to admit that uh, on, this, on the other end, uh, I can't tell you which platform is the best because actually I never had, for my experience, I never had any contracts through Facebook. I had a big contract with the US military like, uh, through DeviantArt. Could you believe this? Wow. <laughs> DeviantArt, you know, yeah. this yeah. they're browsing yeah. to see which spiky shoulder yeah. pads so will you must, fit there. You check your notes. The best, yeah. Yeah. You check your notes on DeviantArt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because man, it's, it's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> All the comments on DeviantArt are so funny, but it's, it's special. It's just special. So if you see the uh, military commenting on your DeviantArt stuff. No, 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 real, no. Right? It was just a private message, yeah. but uh, I never expected that it could come mm -hmm. from here. But you know, and uh, most of the job I had was uh, with a uh, former CG hub and now at Station. But on the other hand. I would like to point out that a lot of people, like uh, students, are asking me exactly this question. But what about you know the fact that uh, ten years ago the first team I worked with uh, was made of people coming out from school like uh, Lego Blin, Lego Blin, you know, in Paris and something like that. And most of them didn't post and won't post in the future, and they always have contract. I always saw them, you know, before the end of the contract, having another proposal. My, actually, my mentor, who is a senior, never post anything. But it's super well known in the industry. Like, if your students think, uh, is thinking that he, he can see the whole industry, you know, in the, on the internet, is wrong. Mm -hmm. it, it's a good part, you know, to, to judge yourself. As you, as you say, I totally agree, but there's another side, and a big one, you know. And there was a lot of super professional young because they are coming straight from the school, and I know that recruiters as at at, uh, at uh, the door of Legumblin, you know, and picking up some people to to take them out of France, you know, and bring them out in Hollywood. This is another subject, but uh, <laughs> actually, yes, this, there is this part, and I can't explain this because this is maybe the only the all good fashion, you know, network. Before social network, real life network, yeah. Yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. You're starting somewhere, you behave yourself, and you're doing a good work, and you're professional <laughs> and making links, and it's starting to create your own network actually. And think it's it, it does exist, and it still exists, and it will exist for a long time because industry. We were talking about movies and things like this, mm. and it's plenty of people like this. Yeah. When I paint digitally, how I paint digitally informs yeah. how I work yeah. in oils as well, because like I'm able to explore certain things and explore new compositions and edges and things that normally I wouldn't be able to. Um, yeah, and it sounds ridiculous, but also cooking. <laughs> I, I, love, I love to cook, and every time I cook, it's just like, you know, you learn something about process, or exactly. even more crazier recently, um, uh, yoga. I've been doing yoga lately, and a lot of, like, the road towards, like, improving in any kind of physical endeavor um, depends so much on your own mindset and stupid things like, oh, did I get good sleep? Did I actually eat well? Did I drink water? If I didn't, if, if I messed up any one of those things, my pretzel pose is going to go to shit, you know? <laughs> Which is, but it was just like, so obvious when you do it physically, but when you paint for some reason, like that doesn't register. You're like, I didn't get any sleep, I didn't drink enough water, I didn't eat. Why is my painting not working out? Don't so, you just need coffee though? No. 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 <laughs> I, I, but yeah. I, all of these elitist answers are super annoying. I'll give you a trick that I use <laughs> 70 <laughs> times a day. <laughs> it's really simple. I was going to say lens flare, but. Um, um, <laughs> It's hard because it sounds so dumb, but it's like like f I have flipping on a shortcut, so I paint and I flip, 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 paint, 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 flip, 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 paint, paint. Like every minute, every thirty seconds, flip back and forth, flip, 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 so that you can see if your perspective is vertical in order or horizontal. Your, sorry, uh. vertical or horizontal? <laughs> Only uh, Only horizontal. Horizontal. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, you should try so vertical. I, I did <laughs> recently, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's the new one. <laughs> So it, I'm just saying it's, it's such a low practical <laughs> thing, <laughs> but it really helps you spot your own errors. That's so. good. That's useful. I mean, yeah. no, cooking too. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna be like, it's cool too. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think I, no, no, of course no. it's all true about going back to the basics and, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and and changing mediums and all that stuff. And I'm thinking, 
you guys are awesome and you you do the right thing. I don't. What do I have some tricks? No, you do the no, right so, thing. So no, you're having uh, a step back. When you're yeah. doing that, you're having yeah. a step back. Exactly. That's and this is the painter watching yeah. the, the yeah. painting in, in a mirror yeah. to have That's this that kind that of yeah. step yeah. back. So. Yeah. One of, one of uh, the stupid things that I didn't do, I used to work on my own paintings like this. Yeah. Right. And then I read in a sergeant notes, sergeant, hey, that one of the things that the students uh, noted in sergeant is that he would obsessively go back and forth. And it's like, you're just like, oh, okay. I stood up and started going. I'm like, oh, yeah, clear. it's clear as day. So it's the same thing. Well, that's why I think working at an easel or drawing at an easel is always a good thing because it gives mm -hmm. you that chance to yeah. get some perspective, step mm -hmm. back. Because if you're sitting in a chair, you're just always... It's always in your face, but if you're standing, you can, mm. you can literally just step back for a moment. I mean, you can't do everything at an easel, but um, it helps to have a bit of that. Just get a selfie stick for your. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Actually, I have another uh, Photoshop trick. Like once again, you guys are heroes. Another trick I do sometimes when I'm finalizing and I'm done with lighting and color and all that stuff is uh, uh, when I'm done tweaking the colors, uh, like the midtone and the shadow and the highlights. I play with the blues and the you know, to get a cold highlight and a, and a warm shadow or inversely. Uh, I, I, f I um, copy all the layers down and, and uh, to flatten them and then I make the image black and white and then I play with the, with the contrast just to check if I agree with myself. Mm. Uh, and you can really crush the contrast and, and do some really weird things where you're like, wow, it reach, reads much better now and it'll, it might showcase a lack of outline or a lack of backlighting or something like that. Uh, and then you can... Um, What's the mode? Oh, uh, you can um, put the the view oh, mode of, of to luminescence or something like that, yeah. I believe. And then your contrast changes with the new setting, and it, you know, it can really surprise you. So you can really, if you do environments, especially yeah. with lighting and shadows, you can really stress test uh, your your lighting scenario. It's really really helpful. It and it's it's almost like a contrast version of flipping. It's almost like <laughs> oh oh that's really cool. That's a really cool shape here. I should I should accent that with a, a shadow or or something like that. You can really build some interesting um, compositions uh, like that. Yeah, Very I think cool. um, it's it's really heartening because I draw traditionally all the time, and it's really nice to hear people saying that you know they, they're kind of getting back to that um, or continuing with that and I think it's sometimes you find when you're talking to people with portfolio reviews and stuff is they only work digitally and I think you should always try I'm not saying you should do this but I think it's it's good to always try and have a traditional side to your practice because as Carla said that everything informs everything else and you'll and it's it's that thing about you know when you make a light it, it makes you not fanny about thinking oh I can try that and didn't quite work undo you trust your gut you trust your instincts when you're doing something that exists in 3d it's a it's an object that you're making you're very much aware that that line that you make or that pigment that you're putting down it's there and it's hard to get it off you can scrape off and something but you, you don't really want to do that you want to scrape it off all the time yeah well sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's ruined what I was trying to say. Um, but yeah, always, I always keep a traditional practice going. I think, again, and it, it's not particularly to do with Photoshop, but or it's, it's anything that, that you're making, I think. If, you have the, if you've got the time in your deadline to do the overnight test, <laughs> oh, yeah. where you, you think you've finished, <laughs> we, we always do that. We always think we're finished, but it's like if you can build it into the, the time you've got to create this stuff, sleep on it. Yeah. When you open that file up or when you open your sketchbook up again, the, the errors, the flaws will leap out at yeah. you. And, you'll know, and mm -hmm. when you've been noodling on something for four hours and it's, it's kind of dying on you and stuff, but you, you don't have the solution and you're like, oh, this is killing me. Sleep on it, open it up again in the morning with fresh eyes, the errors will leap out at you. Always try and build that in to your um, and then, the time you take. And then have, have an hour or two to fix the errors as you see them because they will mm. fade away again like yeah, yeah. as quickly yeah. as you. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I guess that's, you know, we discussed this on one of the podcasts, but that's also one of the reasons to work traditionally is that, you know, you can close the file on your computer and never look at the errors again, but you have to put your painting somewhere that you're working oh. on. And then every time you walk to the kitchen, you have to stare at uh, you know your mistakes. You're painting in a kitchen, man. 
Well, <laughs> maybe your painting's on the way to the kitchen. Cooking, yeah. painting, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's a good parallel, actually. Because uh, both are, you know, a personal way to do the same thing. It's, also, it's, it's a parallel that I use a lot. But I totally agree with everybody. Like, uh, academic things, you know, learning is super important. And uh, I totally, uh, with uh, Raphael, I always have in my backpack my, my, sketch, uh, my sketch pad. And because I have some room, I always have my pencils, you know, and my brushes and my gouache as well. Because it's super important till death, man. I, I, I will do this till death because, and it has to be ugly, it has to be dirty, you know. It's not meant to be uh, to be released. This is your your exercises, your your experiences. This is all of this. It's, it's come from there. And after this, yes, you can allow you to to go on Photoshop and use 3D and use all of the things. But the academic things, it's the most important. And uh, yeah, every day, every time I can. It's super important. And if, even if you can see all the photo bash on my station pages, it's, it's just because the industry asked me to do this. You know, because now the mood is about doing super realistic games for uh, since, uh, since maybe uh, 15 years now. Uh, no more Mario, no more Sonic, no more things like this. Or maybe just a little bit, but just go in Ubisoft, go in at Eidos, in Warner or something. Everybody, everything is photo realistic. And uh, as time is money, you know, you have to be quick and efficient so you use photograph, but it doesn't prevent you at all to, uh, to work, to, to work in a bar, at, at a place, I don't know where, where, when you're comfortable, but having a sketchbook, it's super, uh, comment on dit primordial? Uh, primordial. Uh, primordial. Primordial. Yeah. <laughs> this, <laughs> it's super important. Yeah, never forget this, like, yeah. uh, it could be oil. I love the, the idea of oil because you have no control Z and you really have to think about it. I never tried it, really. Oh, it's so fun. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like I got a lot of friends who's doing it. You it's need good ventilation, <laughs> though, because it will, it will mess you up. For my set try, this <laughs> year. <laughs> this year. You don't have a parachute Ooh. when you... When exactly, you that's, you what like. yeah, that's what I like. That's what I like. And there's another, like, like, sorry, I don't... No, um, um, like, like, with oils, it's like... It's, it seems so silly, but, like... Yeah, like even just how you hold the brush, like holding the brush like like a pencil will give you one mark, holding the brush flat will give you another mark. And it seems like so basic, right? But but it makes you more aware of like why you're gonna make that mark. And 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 if you think about like every mark that you make, it, it all kind of builds together a more interesting painting. And you bring that onto your digital, you know, yeah. self. And, and, and to me, it's helped me immensely. Because before I'm like, I got like maybe three brushes I use all the time, whatever gets the job done. Now it's like, no, this needs this mark. Yeah, now this mark, it, it's fun. You I just think it's, um, if, if I'm painting on canvas, I should try and do it more, more than I do. I never use brushes, I use knives. Because it's so divorced from what I do digitally, and you're and I'm squeezing pigment onto the canvas Aww. and s almost sculpting with it, so it's entirely different to what I'm doing when I'm working in Photoshop, and it's 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 that thing where everything feeds back together because it, it makes you it makes you see. Um, the the really cool thing about it is um, sorry I'm rambling, um, because you've got this finite image size that you're working with, just because the size of canvas you're working with, that informs, the, those four lines of the edge of the, the frame informs compositional choices that you're making. So you're reacting to that all the time. You're not cropping it, you're kind of, you know, how t you can do that later on. You just, oh, I'll just crop that bit because that bit's rubbish there. It's like, you have to work. You've got to work and make it, make it fit within that frame, literally. And it's, that's informed me massively in, terms of how I compose things or how I know I can com can compose things. Um, but yeah, knives. May scary. I add something? So yeah. Uh, because we we're talking about uh, the academic part of uh, it's very important, but uh, I think it's, al it's, uh, it's also important to, uh, to change the medium, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, usually doing kit bash, or now I started sculpture. Even if I don't do uh, any 3D, now I would like to, 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 to try and I'm starting to struggle with ZBrush. But it's just to, uh, to manipulate something else, you know, changing your mind, having ideas through another medium, you know, uh, as a photo bash and kit bash are super close, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? 
Definitely, it's the sixty, exactly the same way of thinking. You have something which is totally stranger from <laughs> the subject you would like to uh, to to get at the end, and you you're struggling to change it to scale it. It's not it. cheating. It's not cheating. No, it's, it's, it's you're creating something. Yeah, yeah, you're using inspiration. Exactly, it came from everywhere, and the things. Uh, my favorite example is Star Wars. You know, take, <laughs> just take a look at the ships. Yeah. You know, you have u bots <laughs> in it and things, you know. It came from everywhere and it's su super funny, super interesting. And well, and w w what you were going to say earlier about, or what you were saying, it ties in with um, like photo bashing, is that the people who can draw, when they go to collect the photos, that is a drawing process in their head. Like they've, because they're familiar with it, yeah. picking the right pieces to put together is effectively exactly. drawing. Same with kit bashing. The more you're drawing, the more you th you're thinking about, this is the structure I want. This is the piece I have. And, and so how do we solve that problem? Like it's, yeah. I'm a huge believer in like drawing yeah. as a fundamental is like, it's a good it, it exercise. Yeah. lifts everything up. Yeah, it's a marvelous exercise because it's always about solving a problem. Mm -hmm. Every time you're putting a piece, you know, on your subject, you're creating actually another problem. Because what I'm going to do with the other piece after this? <laughs> How can I make it fit with the other, you know? And super interesting. And okay. there's a difference between having like uh, maybe like 50% of the image, the final image would be just one single photo you took from somewhere. Mm. Or just having some piece that give you inspiration and give you like uh, maybe some... Uh, desire to paint something different with different colors and it's just a material and I think uh, the, the the drawing skills are really improving with the with the traditional media I think I feel mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm more improving my drawing skills by drawing on paper okay, I don't know if no I, I try the the, the the Cintiq but I think I'm really more improving on paper but scientifically it's actually proven because drawing on paper it's like your graphic note taking so yeah. it's like you know you learn better when you actually take notes yeah. when you're listening right. to something and drawing they, they say that it I, I'm biased though because I <laughs> draw pictures for a living but um, but I think like everything that we do it's essentially I think it's just cultivating yourself as an artist it's cultivating your eyes and your ability to see and so by exploring diverse mediums you're giving yourself other perspectives and you're, you're cultivating how you look at things so just like when you're photo bashing it's a drawing or like okay I don't like working in CG I can animate in CG I don't like it but when I'm working in CG posing that that rig that puppet I'm doing it like a drawing I'm creating a drawing with a puppet yeah. and it's the same thought process as when I draw on paper and I've I think that everything that you do in your life you know, comes back to how you perceive things. It comes back to that whole style conversation. You're just learning to articulate what your voice is and, and cultivating your, your, your eyes. And I don't know, because I had a career in ballet before I went into animation. And that, that whole part of my life affects... It's the reason I love Sargent. It's like this whole mm. idea of texture and movement and life. And, and in a single pose when I'm drawing, even if I'm not animating something... I want to have that texture of tension and relaxation and breathing and life in that one moment. And so, so having that like physical side and that, like what you were saying with your yoga, like I get that because I'm like, that's my ballet to me, but it, it's whatever it is for each one of us. I think everything that we do cultivates your, your way of seeing something and unlocks an ability in you that you then can translate into to everything else, like the drawing with photo bashing or, or yeah. being better at sculpting makes you a better draftsperson and all of that so stuff. Do, so. ton, do tons of stuff. Yeah, do yeah. tons of stuff. Uh, so let's, uh, unless you uh, have anything to add, yeah? No, just yeah. interesting that, that you were talking about using your body and if you know your body, if you, know, if, you, if you play soccer, if you know how it feels to hit the ground too hard, if you know how it feels to dance, if you know how it feels to balance, everything we look at we see, we sort of, it reflects back upon ourselves. Like when I design a tank, it has a, it has a nature, it has a purpose, and it, has, it, it all relates back to the body because we see things as, the, the pattern recognition is in us is so, so strong to see ourselves. Yeah, so you can do a lot of different things. Yeah. That, so you say ballet, I say car design, mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. Like there's a motion and a, and, and a relaxation and a tension. And you can almost, feel yourself mimicking, of course, a character, but also objects. So using your body, I think, is, is pretty important. Getting up off your ass and out <laughs> and doing things to feel. So I guess there's kind of exploring different mediums and also different activities. You're able to pull out 
maybe some universal or common principles that help your creative thinking and uh, inspiration and you can process. imbue that into thing into areas where you wouldn't have foreseen it mm -hmm. yeah. well, I, oh, no, uh, I, uh, I've been um, I've been a lacy horrible human for most of my life I barely exercised I play video games all the time and I got into exercise um, about maybe five years ago, just because I got arm injuries. Mm. Um, from um, art? From art, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but it's, it's done me, because I've been so lazy so much of my life um, that I didn't realize like, how much of the body is used when creating something. Um, not just you know, to make something feel you know, that sure. motion, but also, like, just how alert can you be? How awake can you be? How well rested can you be? That seems so basic. But for most of my life, I made really bad paintings because I was tired or because I didn't get enough sleep or because I hadn't eaten right. And I didn't realize that. And now, today, just because like it's so evident, like if you try to dance and you haven't eaten well, you're not going to have the energy but to last you. You're right. Like sometimes and, people think yeah. just because we sit and draw, yeah. it's not physical. No. But it, it is physical. Yeah. Your, yeah. your mind, like it's one of those things when you, after a long day of work, you're just like, I'm exhausted. So when people ask and you, like, how can I be awesome like you, you reply, like, just get three meals a day and get your sleep, this stupid. This it sounds stupid, but it's so true. Important. It's so important. It's like your like brain is like a part of it. <laughs> you can't it's, leave like a rock star and be... Uh, no, I, no. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the idea of rock star anyway, <laughs> so it's okay. You made a super yeah. important point, actually, because yeah. uh, my mentor always said me, like, uh, sketching is like uh, training yourself in the, at the gym, you know? Mm -hmm. You can do, if you're training well every day, you can do maybe a hundred of push-up without effort, but just stop for three months. And yeah. you're going but to be I, harder to get... I, it's exactly the same. I felt that when exactly. I was at Disney, because we'd be doing thousands... You know, you're working on a scene 24 frames a second. We'd be going through, like, hundreds of drawings. Yeah. And if I took a week off to get the rust back out, like, to be able to draw at that capacity and speed, um, it took me a couple of weeks to warm up to it. Every time I'd go home for the holidays, and my parents are surgeons, and my dad would be like, why do you work more than I do? Because I'd always <laughs> want to be drawing. <laughs> so I'd stop, you know, and he'd, be like, he'd always be saying, take a break. But then I'd come back after the holidays not having drawn, let's say, and you, I would see it in my work. It was, it was, yeah. and I think, and there is, like, you know, they say there's that whole neuroreceptivity thing where, you know, doing repetitive actions, again, like, that's why in ballet we will repeat the same thing at a bar because you're developing a neuro connection to those muscles just through repetition, and so that's where your practice and your repetition, and there is a physical, I mean, it's not, let's say, as physical as, some athletic activities, but it's still a still a real thing, and yeah. um, it's you need to take care of yourself. So I think we'll move to some audience questions now. So we've had a great <laughs> kind of uh, chat around, and we've gone a little bit late in our time. Um, so we'll do some audience questions. So raise your hand if you have a question. Okay, so uh, go ahead over there in the center. Um, I don't know if it's on. Okay. Um, hi, I would like to direct this question mostly to people who uh, work in video game and have been art directors because uh, I would like to know what was your experience being your first time being an art director on a video game project and what kind of lesson would you like to share to people uh, for their own ex first experience? Uh, like what would you retain from that and want to share to other people so they don't make the same mistakes as you? That's my question. So our directors, Rafael, uh, Ian, I think uh, we, Rasmus. We, we yeah. talked about the topic a, a little bit earlier. I remember uh, becoming an art director because I've had, I had been around the video game production from concept art to modeling to post-processing to lighting to level layout. Uh, I, I, I had touched a lot of parts of game production and, and had a flair for that. So uh, I got that uh, promotion and I was very nervous about the human responsibility and having to be the one whose job it is to inspire everybody while making sure that they deliver something very specific. That is a huge conflict. And I mean, a lot of us creative people, we're generally reasonably soft people. We like interaction more than conflict. We like to have a good experience and all that stuff. So those two would clash, getting the results while getting, having, an, having a good day. Or if I see somebody not having a good day, it's my responsibility. Yet I need them to do this. And I think 
the solution might come back to some of the stuff we talked about before. If you can be humble enough to not pretend like you have an answer if you don't, and open it up to the people around you and say, we need to, we need to attain this goal, we need to attain this emotion, we need to hit this tonality, whatever. How can we get there? Let's work on that for a week. So in that sense, you push the responsibility to other people. And then, um, so you're much more of a guide than a um, boss, you know? Um, so the humbleness to not pretend to have an answer when you don't will make you relax a lot and make the answers come from the team you're guiding. That's the lesson I would, I would say. And it took a while and it, it's, it was tough at, at the beginning, but uh, eventually you'll rest in yourself enough to know that you don't, if nobody expects me to have the answers like that all the time, just sometimes, that's good enough, I can do that. And then you relax in the rest of the space, so to, so to speak. Any, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyone else have a mic? Yeah, go ahead. And um, then the next people can raise their hands and someone will bring you a mic. Yeah. Hi. Um, how do you go and approach, like, let's say, a new topic or maybe a, a kind of theme you've never approached before? Like, how do you start it? Or where do you go? Because maybe you've never done it before. Anyone in sp specific or is it open to the panel? Okay, well, I'll make it open. Uh, yeah. For me, it's research. There's a lot I don't know. In fact, there's a lot I don't know. Um, so it's no, research. There <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, so for me, it's research. Um, I like to see if like, if something is about motion, I'd like to see it on YouTube move. If something is about a locale, I'll exp you know, try and explore a little bit about it. Um, it yeah, research. If, if you're able to like, observe it in, in real world, like, you know, oh, uh, I don't know, it's different kind of clouds or something. I'll observe, you know, go outside and see what kind of clouds are out today. And uh, I, I don't know. But it, for me, mostly, it's just research. I put on my science hat. Yeah. Science the shit out of this. I, I, I tend to, mm -hmm. when you're looking at, at something new especially, I try to d bury myself in the real research for a good while and make some choices and, and, and set out some, some rules. And only then will I start to look at how other artists and, and people might have covered yeah. that subject as well. Um, I, I really don't want to let that be the first pass though. Like you kind of want to have the first bite of the cake rather than the chewed up you know, regurgitated version. I, I also, that's that's something that I want to add on to because I also don't look at, when I'm like in the early stages of something, I do not like to look at other artists because like it'll s somehow always inform what I'm doing. And not just that, it doesn't allow me f f room for failure because then I'll be like, oh, but they did it, <laughs> you know? I'd rather kind of take that inspiration from where they got it too, which is from real real world. So yeah, that's, that's really good. Anyone else have a question? So just raise your hand, someone will bring you a microphone. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. So you can bring the microphone to the next person and then, uh, so I'll let you start your question, go ahead. I guess this is for everyone at the panel. Uh, out of the pre-existing IPs, do any of you have a personal favorite that you would love the chance to work on or add your input to? Yeah, yeah mine, is, uh, <laughs> mine is really obscure, so it's, it's always easy to answer. Um, but I, I love the Mist and Riven games from back in like the 2000s, pre-2000s. If they were ever to like go back in again, and man, they'd be so much fun. But, and, and the reason being just because if you are familiar with them at all or, or not that like, um, especially with Riven, it was like a culture that you had to unpack. And they did such a great job of designing that world in a way that everything was intuitive and kind of made sense if you just sat and looked at it for a while. And, and I've tried to use that approach in everything that I do afterwards, where like something's nature is innate, like the form follows function so well that, that like you get it. So I would just love to be a part of that team. Cool. I'd like to work on a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd, that'd be, be fun. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go back and do sex. Oh. <laughs> I missed it so much. <laughs> Every morning I got it. I had a smile on my face, and never been sick. And even if I was sick, I was there because uh, everything talked to me. 
characters environments to show so respect so and uh, and I can't talk about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> No, I want to uh, to keep uh, some. Uh, you know, I would like to uh, to get old in this industry, and I don't want to frighten myself, you know, <laughs> by talking too much about it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I would say Morrowind, like Edos Calls. Mm. Yeah. This kind of. Uh, I would you just just start drawing that stuff. I yeah. just want to see you drawing. I would love to Elder Scrolls stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they, have, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Uh, go ahead, I'll, we'll take our next question, then at the same time someone raised their hand and then a, new, a mic will be brought to the next person. So go ahead. Hello. This question is directed toward, um, toward everybody. So are you seeing um, like, any tr like any trends or any changes going on like in illustrated concept art pieces that are, or, or just in the way it's presented that you're looking forward to or that it's exciting, it's new, it's refreshing, or is it something that's you know, it's more timeless that, like, like the change is less consistent. Or I, I, I like to see person do people do the work that they're passionate about. Yeah. Like, you can always really tell when it's something that they really love. Yeah. And there, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> there's the, a few games on iOS. I've played uh, Old Man's Journey, and it's it's really beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Old and Man's Journey. Old Man's Journey. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's really beautiful. You you just, you know, move oh. from from a background to a different layer, and you you have these moments of memories, and it's very nostalgic. But it's yeah. it's really oh. beautiful. And there's also a, a game made by uh, guys in uh, Eastern Europe. I think it's Sam Sorot, Sam Osot Three. Yeah, yeah. It, it's visually stunning, and the world they created is really is really unique. I've never seen that. In anywhere, it's re it really unique. It's they did. What's um, it called? Sam's right? They did a Sam Rusts. You're right. Sam hey, mine. How Sam are you Rust. doing? <laughs> Sam Rust. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's. I think that's because it's kind of hand drawn as well. So it's unique to that artist. It's and how he says unique stuff. to these guys. It's beautiful. That's fantastic. There was a game. I mean, if if it's games you're talking about or you know game design, um, there's a game called Inside. You guys oh, yeah. played that? Yeah. yeah. That's the best looking thing I've played in a long I mean, mm. the, you know, so you, you, I guess you, just you know, that's, that's that's very nice stuff. stuff. Oh. Yeah. But um, yeah. that's yeah. a beautiful Trends little game because you paired everything back to its basics. Yeah, it's and it's, it's monochrome, so it's all about values. But the mm. spatial design and the level progression and all that kind of stuff in that is just amazing. Animation, everything, mm. mood, everything, character. It's fantastic. If, if you've not had a look at that, it's a PC game. Check it out. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's on all platforms inside. Yeah. All oh, right. Is it? Yeah. It's not entirely monochrome yeah. either. But yeah. And these are Amazing. examples of people doing their thing, like whatever yeah. they really, the stories they want to tell in the way that they want to tell it, mm -hmm. and like that is it. It always just everybody just lights up when they see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's it's not generic. It's it's taking something that you've 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 kind of seen it before, but it's they've, they've done it with such passion and heart that it sings. You know. It's yeah. got a real kind of value to it. And, and Ian, that's a good amount of industrial decay as well, which I assume. Sorry? That's a good amount of industrial decay Absolutely. as well, which I assume which that kinda, you enjoy. Which you know, brings me to it. There's pipes all over it, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pipes are always good. Any, anyone else have a mic for another question? Or anyone have any questions? Okay, go ahead. You have the honor of asking the last question. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's a pointer. Well, uh, to anybody who would like to answer. Uh, I'd like to know uh, how, um, how long your dream job remained your dream job? <laughs> Till the end. So you're <laughs> <laughs> I spent three years in a dream. As soon as I shut it down. <laughs> oh, it depends on you. Actually, maybe. Three years long. Uh, yes. <laughs> it's long time. I, it's so weird because like, I didn't really have a dream job. I had things I wanted to do, but I just wanted to paint. Um, so that's still good. Mm. <laughs> and hopefully yeah, we'll continue to keep <laughs> going. We're, we're probably all very fortunate to get paid to do what would be, we'd, we'd be doing it anyway. And we're very fortunate to be in the position that somebody's going to give us money to do what we'd be doing. It does that. It does sometimes, you know, because your hobby becomes your job. Mm -hmm. It means that you don't have a hobby anymore, so you've got yep. to find new uh. hobbies and all that kind of stuff. But 
I never forget how, for, I mean, there, there are days when you think, God, I've got to do this revision but, for the 10th time, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. it's um, to be paid to do what we do. It's always a dream job. But something important that I want to add on to that, um, I feel like the more I talk to different artists at different stages, there will always be a stage in your career where you need to somehow do your own thing, mm -hmm. even if it's on the side. Mm -hmm. Um, um, Alan Williams, he's a really fantastic yeah. illustrator, and when I work with him at Bam, he he stressed on me like the importance of doing, you know, stuff on your own time because even though it's your dream job, it's still in some ways you're you're working, so you, you know you won't you'll still have to you know depending on you know where you're at and you might have a producer or a director or someone have a say in it and and that's fine that's part of it but i think at some point it's important to do something that nurses you as well and feeds your own creativity because otherwise it's easy to become you know jaded, I think, because you want to be able to explore different venues that sometimes you're not able to because someone is paying you. So I would say that's important. And just a little note to that. It sounds like, like when does the dream die? It sounds like that's <laughs> what the question is. Yeah. And uh, you guys touched upon it a little bit, like when, you're, when your job is your hobby and all that. I think that you know when you are withering away a little bit because of this, because of that, then it's time to change your the context you're in, or it's time to change your approach. And, I, and you know, you know when you're not being the right version of you, when you're letting something go or letting something slide or whatever, and then it's time to really spin it, do something else. And I mean, then don't be afraid of that change if it's internal with, say, yeah. mythology or, or approach or changing a viewpoint saying, self-worth or all these things there's so many things or if it's the context and the venue or the city or whatever I think being open that you are always moving forward even though it feels like you are moving backwards or sideways like don't be afraid of that because it's going to be it's going to give you new inspirations new inputs that's, that's going to feed you in a new way and sometimes you need to reinvent yourself mm -hmm. or how you carry yourself or whatever and that's I would say I have yet to see it be a bad thing rather than a good thing. So, yeah. when you're really passionate about your work, uh, the impact of you know when you have like a, a bad meeting is maybe more important than if you have a job that is where you're maybe less invested. So yes. when it's really about your passion, uh, when you get uh, when you get hit, it's it's more like uh, you get more the impact. It's more yeah, difficult. Sure. So it's really like a question of finding the balance between this passion and the and the job. Because you, you can take things very personal yes. and uh, be really affected by that. So also, the production, when it's, it's a long time production, uh, we have these moments where we're super excited and the moments where I was saying you know, before, when it's really uh, more boring or more difficult and challenging. So it's always like, like this, I would say. Like, you have this moment of like, super excitement and then it's like, uh, mm. yeah. less interesting and then <laughs> super it's exciting and then... Uh, you <laughs> know, let's so let's be honest, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. at the beginning of the production, it's less like heaven, you know, you're 223 in school. And when it comes the time, three years, three years later, when you have to produce props and all the other things, you have, it's... Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's less fun. <laughs> it's an interesting point. It's like, you kind of have to be true to yourself and follow the spark, but you also have to have follow through and be patient. And when it's not fun, <laughs> if you stop when it's not fun anymore, you're never going to do anything. Yeah, that's that's so you've got to yeah. stay through the slope, right. you know? Yeah. Yeah. You just got to be, with experience comes the recognition of when it's slope and when it's not right anymore. Can so I? Let, yeah, me, let me, let me, oh, sorry. No, no, oh, I, I was just going to segue that into amateur marriage counseling. Um, yes. That, like, you, you get married, and this isn't me saying this just because my wife walked in the door five minutes ago, but, it, <laughs> um, but that, like, you, you get married and you feel like, I'm in love, I'm in love, I feel it, and, and you think that love is an emotion, but love is an action. Like, love is the action that you decide, like, you know, when you're ha having to do the dishes and the kids are sick and you're frustrated and you're, and you're angry, but, like, you still do the things to show love. You still do the things to get involved in it. And like you say, you, you, you find what's, what you're passionate about and you, you stick through the parts where things go down, down low so that, like, uh, uh, you know, again, like, I've been doing this for art for 12 years. I've been married for seven years. I love my wife more now than I did when we first got married. Um, I love you. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> but um, but like I've been doing I've been doing art professionally as a concept artist for 12 years and like it has been not at all what I thought it was going to be but I like it a lot more now than I did when I started. 
But you've also found your own way of managing it. Exactly, and, and, yeah. And, and a, a huge part of that is managing the expectations you have to it. And, and, and taking some of that to heart, having a terrible meeting that means something yeah. to you can be fantastic rather than becoming jaded and giving up and letting go and all that stuff. So it's about balancing. Uh, is it a work-life balance? No, yeah. it's, it's maybe you find how you want to conduct yourself uh, in relation to your, your yeah. job or yeah. your craft or whatever. And, I think... Uh, I think um, it's 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 really interesting because like um, we always see like difficult moments as like bad things, right? But there's so much to learn from a difficult moment, and especially if you approach that difficult time with the best of yourself, you know, with your best qualities, you can either learn something, you know, that you liked that you thought at first you didn't like, or you can get yourself out of situation and go, you know, somewhere else where it's better, where it feels right for you. So I think for, for those moments where you're feeling really like, you know, down, I think a lot of it is learning how to like soothe your own anxieties and your own insecurities and then take a step forward, you know, pushing the best you can. And like you say, Matt, solve it mm -hmm. by action. Yeah. Solve it yeah. by actions because your yeah. actions yeah. Will, will alleviate the problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't think about it and don't live in your head. Just make something of it. And, and there's, there's a... Man, I'm gonna sound like a big hippie. Uh, <laughs> there's there's um, interesting re uh, things like like when you think about stress or the idea of stress. Like, what is stress? Stress is usually friction, something that's going up against something. And there's only like four ways you can like handle it. One is 100% acceptance. Be like, okay, and then you're not stressed. Mm -hmm. The second is 100% acceptance, but I can change it, and then you go and change it. And then the third one is, well, walk away. And that's fine too. Um, in my own personal life, I walked away from 3D. It's a great, fantastic tool, but for me, it's not what I want. And it would definitely help me in many other situations, but I walked away from that one because I'm like, it's not what I want. The fourth one is just living in stress, and that one sucks, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, those are some super useful life strategies, and I love to kind of uh, thinking of love and I guess art <laughs> as an action, right, rather than um, something else. So, is there anyone? Um, I think that do the dishes. Okay, maybe yeah. you got yeah. one. <laughs> we'll do fine a, a final, yeah. Yeah, do the truly art. Final, final question. Do the yeah. Super final. Is this like the Photoshop exactly. <laughs> like, this is a super, super final, final too, yeah. man. And it's yeah. Yeah. two final and eight. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she doesn't care anymore. Final. <laughs> right. So, real final question. Um, so, uh, what advice would you have? To, and this question is for anyone. Um, for someone who had a different career path before, um, for example, like I was a user experience designer, uh, and who wants to become a concept artist or do art and paint for a living, um, what advice would you give someone like that? Because it's very, it's filled with doubt. Any, any, ex any experience yeah. from real life will make you a better artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in, game, in the games industry, I think we, we, the biggest challenge we have is people are gamers, they look at games, they want to make games. It's all very one-sided. It's mm -hmm. boring, frankly. Mm -hmm. And so anytime somebody comes and have a different experience before, it will help because th th there will be value in that. Yeah. So that's not a physical thing, but I'm like, James use Gurney. that. It, it's a good story. Yeah, James Gurney used to be what was like an anthropologist uh, yeah. before going into illustration. I have a couple friends of mine who used to be um, biologists beforehand. Um, some people come from coding. Some mm -hmm. people come from all the aspects, and it's fine. I know a concept artist who was a landscape architect. Yeah. 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 The, well, sorry, the original concept artist was an industrial designer, yeah. was, you know, like... Yeah. The guy that did Simba in The Lion King, and he right. created Simba, and he animated him, and drew him. Mm. Mm. Lion, animated, yeah. anatomy, all that rotation, that's, that's all Ruben mm. Aquino, the architect, wow. that's former awesome. architect, so... It's, yeah, it's not a it's, negative, it's a plus, no, I think, so don't worry. <laughs> and people get into things like at all different mm -hmm. times. I mean, I mean, my parents were surgeons, and I applied to pre-med mm -hmm. and th at that point that was when I found out for the first time that I actually 
that there was a school where I could learn to draw. Like, I actually didn't know that you could even... Like, I feel mm. so dumb because I wasn't really... Like, the internet had, like, you know, five websites. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't know. I went to a school that, like, my, my artistic outlet, my parents let me do ballet professionally as long as I kept my academia up and, and then I, I just kept my marks up because that's what you do and, and you I went to health sciences and Sejap and I applied to pre-med and I got into pre-med that same year I found out from a bookstore I was in a bookstore because I used to go to this bookstore and look at art of books all the time and the woman that worked there she talked to everyone in the store and there was an animator that day in the store and and she's like Sam you should meet this guy and 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 I did and he told me about this college and I applied didn't tell my parents got Ooh. in it was a big drama <laughs> big drama when I told them that that was what I was gonna do but you know I mean it I I think you know you I didn't know I mean I drew my whole life I, I love to draw all the time but I actually I feel so dumb saying this in this room now and Ooh. I think people don't realize it but I literally grew up just thinking these people were just had some magical life that they just happened to get into this career but like I was always the person getting in trouble for having drawings in my history book no, like <laughs> margins and like holidays for me were, were like I'm gonna draw and I just was so excited <laughs> to draw all day and um, and my parents even told like ever since I was three years old I was getting them to pause Disney films frame by frame and I was drawing them <laughs> apparently and uh, but I didn't know you could do it like I'd read about these people and I don't I, I just thought oh they were so lucky they they knew someone at Disney they they were friends with someone from Hollywood and they got this great job and I didn't think you could actually I don't know I, I, I was it sounds so silly but I had to leave Montreal I grew up here but I I didn't know then that, like, you know, you guys have places like this now, and it's amazing, but I didn't, I didn't know. So, it, um, I mean, we, we were talking about this earlier again. Um, did, did everybody here apply for a job as a concept artist and then were given that job as a concept artist? You did? Yeah. Because I, I don't know that many people who, who weren't doing something else mm -hmm. in a particular company. Oh, and then there would, there would, uh, you would do stuff yeah. that was kind of concept art or design, and then you would eventually get the title of concept artist within that company. Um, that's, that's how I started. I mean, I, I did everything from kind of pixel art to you know, character design, modeling, all this kind of stuff. But then mm. this job of concept artist came up, and I was like, at last. And I'd been probably working in the industry for about 12 years at that point wanting to be a concept artist, but there wasn't a kind of a job as, with, with that title. It's just, um, you, you do what you need to do to kind of earn a living, and keep, it's this personal practice thing, keep that thing going at the same time, so when you get a chance to do it, you're ready. Mm -hmm. I would say... You can, you know, jump in. And just to clarify my story, mm -hmm. I got hired as a concept artist, but of course ended up doing modeling, yeah, yeah. level yeah. layouts, yeah. all the other things. So yeah. it's an inverse journey it's, <laughs> almost. It's like what, what's key as well is like if, if there isn't that concept art job, that dream job that we were just talking about there, that, that isn't there for you to, to get, don't, um, don't turn down any other offers because it will open doors and you'll meet people who will um, enrich your life and all that kind of stuff and, and you will make contacts on the way the, and if, if that's still what, what you want to do I'm always kind of I, I always think that if you have it in mind you'll get there mm -hmm. it's just it's never the that you know I want to be a concept artist I'll study concept art I leave school get a job as a concept artist yeah. you know I, I think that's kind of rarely happens to anybody but there will be a convoluted route and while you're on that journey I hate that word but you know You'll be meeting all these people and having all these experiences and doing cool stuff that, that makes your work better. You know? I think it's distancing yourself from the job. Well, I don't know. I'll speak for my, my I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think we're on the same page. But it's, <laughs> it's not the job that defines you as an artist. It's mm. not the company that you work for that it guarantees a great. I, I, I'm saying this because I had this idea, and I guess I had a bit of an inverse because so I was lucky and I got into this great program at that, you know, my parents at the time were not, you know, all like on the moon about. But um, I got, Disney recruited me from there and I, I was fortunate enough to be hired as a, a full animator straight out of school. 
And uh, so I had my dream job. Like it was like this amazing dream job. And, and in my mind, I was like, well, being at, at that time, everything to me was defined by whether or not I got into Disney. Like that was what yeah. defined me as an artist. Yeah. And then I came to realize that it has nothing to do with it. Disney pays you money and you use your talents to, and to add to this creative team of talented people and hopefully make great art together. Mm -hmm. But you can find great artists to make great art together wherever you are. And, and I see myself as the the project now, and no company tell, like defines whether or not I'm good. You could be yeah. at Disney and be a terrible artist, yeah. but you have the job at Disney. You know, I mean, mm. you know, Disney's pretty picky, but like they, mm -hmm. but but you can you can be a better artist than anybody at Disney, um, and not have ever worked at Disney. Like it's it's about you, and the job is yeah. the way that you make your living. And if you're fortunate mm. enough to have a job that you do the work that you love to do every day with the people and the artists that, I mean, for me, it's just the talent that I want to be around. I mean, I only wanted to, when I look back now, I realize the only reason I wanted to spend my whole life at Disney was because I just wanted to be around those artists and learn from them. I didn't care if my name was in the film credits or not. I just wanted my life to be learning from these people. But um, yeah, so I think, I think also just for me, at least, it was, yeah. you know, just remembering that it's not the company, it's not the job, it's you, so. Yeah, that is so, that is so, so pivotal, um, because I've, I've seen too many people fall into trap of the allure of the job title, the allure of the company, the allure of the project. They're, they're good goals, but, like, your self-worth isn't attached to them. Mm -hmm. um, you're, it's all about your work. It's all about like the love you have for it, the love you have to learn about it, to you know improve upon it. That is the thing that will actually take you way far further to places you've never even thought of. More so than oh, I ended up at a company. Yay! I can I can I get the badge now. No, that it's so. Yeah, that's very pivotal. Well, words of. Truer words of wisdom have never been spoken. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, we're going to wrap this up. But thank you very much, everyone, for coming. And let's have a nice round of applause for our masters. So follow the advice and meet people and do real networking. And uh, we will see everyone tomorrow morning.